All right, so people always ask me what settings are you using for your printers. I like the quality that you get. What some things I can do to make my prints look nicer. So I'm gonna show you some tips and tricks that I've picked up throughout the years that you can do for your prints. I'm not gonna lie, most of the time, it's not like the settings in your slicer, like Cura or whatever. Like that has some to do with like what you're doing, but like out the gate, the default settings are pretty good. Like I only do like minor tweaks to whatever I'm doing. So let me show you some things to optimize your prints. So the first thing and probably the most important is to make sure that your belts are nice and tight. So uh, these are my two CR10s, but every printer has belts. Um, listen to this sound. They should be nice and taut and have enough tension where it kind of sounds like a, a shrumming of like a, a, um, a bow, like a guitar string. And then the same thing with this, if I could. Both of these are nice and tight. You also wanna make sure that um, all your bolts, this sounds stupid, but you also wanna make sure all your bolts uh, and everything are tightened. So like sometimes this carriage will come loose and every now and then I'll just try and wiggle it, make sure I make sure it's really secure. Most printers have like these, uh, these nuts that you can just take a wrench to and adjust the tighten tightness of like the rollers on it. The next thing that's probably most important that people overlook is uh, to make sure you really level your bed. Like it sounds stupid and like you may think you know how to level your bed, but just really take your time and make sure it's super level. Even if your printer has auto leveling, the more time you take to make sure that your print surface is really flat, will make sure that the uh, print quality is great. You make sure you have a really good first layer and then everything that builds up from that is gonna stem into like a successful print. I'm sure you guys have seen how to level a 3D printer. And basically you go around to the four corners of your build plate, you take a piece of paper. So a piece of paper should be basically the thickness of your first layer and you put it in between your nozzle and your build plate you hear that? There should be the slightest amount of friction between the build plate and your nozzle for it to be perfect. The last thing to consider is um, once you have your, your build plate uh, super level and you've done your leveling and you go to print your first print, before you walk away from it, just take a look at the first layer. And it should look something like this because after you level your build plate, there's also the Z offset height. So that's basically like if you install a new nozzle, maybe the distance between the nozzle and the build plate changes like microscopically. And that variable will adjust like how close it is to the build plate. I'll show you what your first layer should look like. All right, so this is what your first layer should look like. So this, this is laying down raft here, but you see how I, I press my finger over it and it's not really going anywhere. You have good thickness to the layer as the no nozzle's moving around. And it's, if you're too close to the build plate, your, your filament will look a little like transparent or grayed out. You won't see like the full thickness of it. And if you're too far away from the build plate, the filament will like pry off easily or won't really stick. So in order to adjust that, most printers have Z offset. Uh, Z minus will bring your Z nozzle, your nozzle closer to the build plate. Z plus will bring your nozzle further away from the build plate. Also based, this is gonna vary based on what printer you have, but I have, um, I mentioned these CR10s here, and I recently got these flex flexible build plates. So these flexible build plates are like magnetic and they're just like, slap right on and the surface is super textured. So I get really nice prints. I also print with rafts and you'll see that in my settings if you look at them, that like we'll always make sure you have a super nice uh, first layer and you don't have like build adhesion problems. Um, but I love these things. It makes it super easy to pop off prints. You just like pry this as you're moving the part off and it pops right off. You can also get some isopropyl alcohol um, and I'll occasionally like clean my build plates. I'll wipe it down with isopropyl alcohol and just some paper towel. 
and that'll like get rid of any oils you have on the build plate and help with adhesion a lot. Aside from that, uh, for getting my prints off the build plate, I'll usually use some pliers or like a thin spatula to just pry it off. But ever since I got these flexible build plates, it, I haven't even had to use these. They just come right off. It's great. Also for my two CR10s, I mentioned I'm using a 0.6 millimeter nozzle. These are the micro Swiss nozzles. Normally your nozzles are made out of brass, um, but these ones are built different. Like I never get clogs with them. They're so great. I've installed them once and I've never had issues with them. Um, so I'll, I'll leave a link for you guys to get your own of those if you want. Another thing you can do is buy this super lube or multi multi-purpose synthetic grease. Uh, I use this for all my projects, but I also use it for greasing my printers. So your printers have these giant lead screws and every so often, maybe like, I don't know, once or twice, or once every two months or whatever, I'll wipe these down with isopropyl alcohol and then re-grease them. Um, and just like maintenance like this will keep your printer in tip top shape and give you excellent prints. Also, if you're like me and you put some printers in the basement, so this is my Prusa MK3. This is my Artillery Sidewinder X2. My basement is really, really humid. And uh, in, in order to, humidity obviously affects your prints a lot. It'll um, moisten or dry up your filament and that can lead to quality loss. So in order to prevent that, I put them in these giant lunch boxes and I'll leave an Amazon link if you guys want to get your own that contains the, the air, uh, inside of a controlled environment while the printers are printing and prevents any quality loss from humidity. In terms of tools I use to remove any support or, uh, extra little shrinking, I love this deburring tool. Um, let me show you a close-up. So it's got this like curved edge and it's really easy for like scraping and removing any like extra little shringing or anything like that. This thing's great. And then I also have uh, these needle nose pliers that are great for just like getting into tight places and pulling out support. And then I also like these, uh, these like snippers because they have this like flat edge that I'll use to like pry things off the raft and they're also great for like separating tree supports or like branches of tree supports to like weaken them to take it apart and then for very small things I'll use a like box cutter and I'm also always using safety glasses make sure you don't want any plastic coming off and hit hitting you in the eye and then the last thing is uh if things are giving me a lot of trouble I'll use a hair dryer or a heat gun to loosen up the plastic to be able to pry it off easily.